Okay. All right. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, friends gathered here today, and those that are streaming from somewhere around the world. Um, I just want to welcome you in and just to introduce Reverend Hilton Falkvane, who will be leading today's uh, memorial service for our mother, Yvonne Willer. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Firstly, can I again, once again, extend my deepest sympathies to you, Nolene and Dudley, and your families. My prayer is that you'll just know God's comfort in this time, that you'll know his love and his compassion as he comes alongside all of us to assure us that death is not the end, but that we can continue from here on in. I want to bring us into um, that space of knowing that we in the presence of a God who does care, a God who knows our every need, a God who loves us. So here are some words of Scripture. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall not die. Job wrote, I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand upon the earth. I myself will see him. With my own eyes, I and not another. The psalmist wrote, Do not bring your servant into judgment. Paul, in his letter to the Romans, wrote, I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. In Timothy, 1 Timothy, we read, we brought, we brought nothing into the world and we take nothing out. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. None of us lives to himself and none of us dies to himself. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. Let us also take comfort in the fact that the eternal God is our refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. I have seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. And so we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so it will be for those who died as Christians. God will bring them to life with Jesus. Thus, we shall always be with the Lord. So let us comfort one another with these words. Come, let us pray. Heavenly Father, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you have given us true faith and a sure hope. We pray that you'll help us to live with those who believe in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to eternal life. We pray now that you'll strengthen us with this faith, that you'll give us this hope, and that you bring us comfort as we especially want to pray for Dudley, Nolene, Beth, Ashley, Calvin, Candace, Lauren, Michael, and all the extended family. That they may know that even in the presence of death, they can find compassion and love as they reach out to you and ask you to come alongside of them. Whereas we, in a sense, bid farewell to a mother a grandmother, an aunt, a friend, someone we've come to love and who has loved us in turn. And so as we approach your throne of grace and mercy at this time, gracious God, we depend on your word that you, in you, we have the everlasting arms to catch us in our time of weakness, in our time of sadness, and in our time of brokenness. For this is the prayer that we offer in the name of that same Jesus who rose again from the dead and who even brings us to life through him. Amen. I'm going to invite us to sing our first hymn on that hymn sheet, um, Abide With Me. Um, but we're only singing verses 1, 2, 4, and 5 as the third verse is not included in this. So come let us sing. 
me fast falls the eventide the darkness deepens lord with me abide when other helpers fails and comforts flee help of the helpless look upon with me swift to its close it's out life's little day it joys grow dim it glories pass away change and decay in all around i see I fear no foe with the attempt to blaze. Ills have no weapon, fears no bitterness. Where is that sting? Where grave thy victory? I triumph still if thou abide with me. Hold all thy cross before my closing eyes. Shine through the gloom and point them to the skies. Hymns morning breaks and earth's when shadows flee. In life in death, O Lord, above One of the ways that we celebrate life, and um, this is what Dudley asked me to do, is to make sure that we are celebrating um, his mom's life today, as we also come and obviously give thanks to God for her life, is to hear some tributes, and I believe that he's also going to be reading some tributes and memories and messages from um, family all over. So I'm going to give Dudley this opportunity now to do that for us. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to our home and to, to our memorial service for our mother. Um, I have got notes from around the world, and I think I'll read those before I do the eulogy. So, if you will. From my sister, Nolene. Mom enjoyed playing the piano and loved knitting and embroidery but had a little girl who wanted to rather be outside playing sport and did not like handiwork. When mom turned 50, she became a granny for the first time and Candace made her entry into the world. A lefty who scrambled up onto the piano stool at 18 months, she learned to play the piano and loved it. She plays beautifully still today and the cherry on top was that she so enjoys and does beautiful cross-stitching. So mom's dreams finally came true. When we went into hard COVID lockdown, Mom stayed at Port Elizabeth for about four months. And with the single ladies in the complex, we got together for a chat on Fridays on our front lawns 
which mom also participated in and so enjoyed. One of the ladies, Tony, captured mom's essence so beautifully. She said, Yvonne was a game old bird who easily held her own. I admired her feistiness. Miss you, mom, but we know you're now with dad. From my daughter in Salt Lake City, Ashley. Hi. Hi, everyone. Mom reminds me, Granny reminds me of a pink rose, a timeless flower, a symbol of some very powerful emotions, love, passion, and admiration. They are sturdy, beautiful, and fragrant roses are, just like our gran, and they've been known to provide healing properties too, just like her comforting presence. Roses with a unique combination of thorny stems and fragrant blossoms are often referred to as a symbol of achievement, completion, and perfection. A summary of the life she lived in her marriage, as a mom, as a friend, as a member of her community, and as a grandmother and great-grandmother. Pink roses specifically, as they represent femininity, femininity, refinement, sweetness, and elegance. She had the kindest smile and most gentle nature. She was always so beautifully put together and took pride in the way she carried herself. Pink also symbolizes the gratitude and appreciation that we all have for having had her share in our lives. Early Christian monks planted rose gardens on the grounds of their monasteries to represent the Garden of Eden, the earthly pure paradise. I picture her and Grandpa sitting side by side at this very moment in that Garden of Eden. Thank you, Grand, for your wisdom, your kindness, your love and your guidance. Thank you for all the tea and biscuits, the Sunday roasts, the stories of your cheeky sense of humor. Thank you for being part of our lives. Until we meet again, lots of love, Ashley. From our son Calvin in Zambia. My dearest grandmother, there's a special kind of love that we receive as grandchildren. A love that is filled with wisdom, love, care, and the hope of the very best for us. The knowledge that is passed down to us from stories of life and adventure is one that I can only come from a grand. The special home-cooked meals that always, without a doubt, fill that special spot that no one can even begin to describe. The unique way their grand knows their grandchildren in a way that not even our parents know us. All these unique grandmother specialities was exactly my grand. From the stories she sold around the table in which her special run Sunday roasts would be laid out for us, she told us of her travels and adventures, not only captured my imagination, but also taught me about the living of life without even realizing it. Gran was watching over you, even though you weren't aware of it, while you made life's mistakes and learned. She would later come to tell you that she'd seen it coming, but couldn't interfere. But from a place of love, and knowing that these lessons would make us stronger and help us to learn more about ourselves. These, to me, were the most amazing qualities that I couldn't understand how someone could know more about me than myself. Yet I've learned that this is the love and knowledge that only a grandmother can know. They cannot teach you this, but only show you, all in the meaning of love and the passing of their knowledge. I think, the one, I think one of the only lessons I perhaps didn't receive, and I'm sure you will know this, is not to chug a glass of champagne at fancy dress parties after the speeches, when one is rather young. But this may be one of those times where she stood back and watched so that I could learn from my mistake. But I don't think I've learned that just yet. My gran was special. My gran was kind. My gran was loving and always kept sweets, just as a gran should. You'll always be missed and always be in our thoughts. The memories will always be with me, and I will do my best to pass down your knowledge given to me down to my grandchildren. For even our hearts, I will always love you, your grandson, Kelvin. I then got a message from Paul, Reed Robertson, Tracy, Mike, Charmaine, and Tyron Vester. Dear Dudley, Nolene, and family, our sincere condolences on the loss of your dear mom. Yvonne was a lady with great values and a loving support to us when in our times of need. We are thinking of you at this time. Warm love. So that's what other people thought. And um, I just know that some people didn't cover all the detail. Can I do that now? All right. So mom, mom was born in March 1935 and sadly passed just four days prior to her 87th birthday. She was born to a Gordon and Maisie Mitchell, who were biological parents, and she was the younger of three siblings, one of which was Arthur, 
her older brother and her sister Rona, both who have predeceased her. Through circumstances of life, unfortunately, mom's parents passed and she was adopted by her direct uncle and his wife um, when she was about eight years old. The parents of our, our, our parents, our, our, our mothers and fathers and their, their grandfathers, were rooted down in World War II. Mom being born in 35 was right into the midst of us and had a huge impact on their lives and their, their, their formative years. And, and I hope that COVID doesn't prove to be the same problem for our, for our generations as it were. After her father returned from, North, from the North African war zone, he came back and was employed as a steam locomotive driver. Well, they was qualified as a boilermaker because that's the job the war, post-war allowed him to enjoy. But there was a, a later benefit to that job. Mom was in, educated at N Street Convent, which is down in the uh, east end of Johannesburg City. And uh, she stayed with her grandmother at that time in the city center to be able to commute to school and things like that. Anyway, the rule was when my grandfather did a long trip down to the Cape uh, or Natal or wherever on the train, when he came back in Johannesburg, the train line used to run past the convent. And so he used to give a certain signal on the hooter. <laughs> that did not enamor my mother to the, to the nuns and the, and the uh, sister superiors. And she was many a time chastised for this. And on occasion, her friend who used to laugh with her was sent outside to wave to the train drivers. That was no punishment to my mother because her dad was on the train. So, you know, there was a benefit to that. Anyway, mom met dad when she was 16 years of age. He lied and said he was 20. Um, and to, to avoid him knowing that she was still at school, she used to walk a certain route to work, not to school, I mean, to convent. And there was a building with something municipal building. And she decided that since he worked with the municipality, that was it. So she changed her route to school for a much longer route. As it turned out, he wasn't in that building. He was a building on the other route. And so he, by coincidence, used to see her walking past. And the whole object is that he didn't see her in her school uniform. She didn't win that one. Mom then attended, went on to attend college and completed something you ladies will not know. It's called shorthand typing. Margie, you know that. Yeah, she did the and on Tishul, of course, would know that. So she became very proficient at shorthand typing. And uh, in her early year, working years, she uh, joined Shell South Africa. Uh, she left at some stage to, I think, have me. And she then went back into commercial industry and joined BP South Africa, the m and as it happened. Well, that's just the way life is. And then I think she left there to have no lean. Um, the point was that uh, mom and dad then got married in 1954 in February. And my mom was 18. At that point, my dad had to declare his age. He was 26. You do the numbers. <coughs> Easy trip. It was eight years, not the four years that he lied about. Nonetheless, um, she continued to work and helped with, with the house uh, running of and whatever for Nolene and I when we were youngsters. And mom was one of those mothers that just patently just got on with it quietly at most times. Um, Things happened, there was a routine. If you didn't, your ear was clipped and you fell back into the routine. But mom just always was there as the provider, the nurturer, and, and the one that was able to uh, make sure that it all came together as it were. Later on in her career, she joins a company called Wispecker and she was the PA to the general manager, Mr. Frank Room, who became a very close friend of all of us in the family. When he left Wispeka, he took her along to his next uh, employment opportunity, which was Nedbank Finance and Nedbank itself, where he later retired and mom retired shortly after that in, 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 in age succession, I suppose. So mom had a very loyal support system in her working career. She had people that admired and certainly took cognizance of her abilities and her short-hand typing skills. Okay. Um, mom as a mother, as I said just now, was one of those people who just as I said, made it happen. It just got on things. You got there, the sheets were washed, the bed was tidied up. And it wasn't always mom doing it. She just marshaled it from somewhere. And uh, in the evening after, after, after supper, it was always about the family getting around in the kitchen and finishing off the dishes and things like that. And mom was you know, around and dad and everybody else. So it was a very family orientated lifestyle in our home. When, we, when, we, when mom got older and this time had passed and we were no longer jumping to attention, 
as fearfully as we used to. Uh, we still had to drum to attention. Um, the, the systems changed a bit and mom became a little bit more of a, if I can use the word, a friend. Um, we were able to go and talk to mom and mom would give us advice and mom would give us a bit of a direction. Sometimes not even if she was invited. Um, we would get it anyway. And then more laterly, when, when mom's uh, and mom was living on her own, um, you know, it, it was just so easy to go and listen to her because mom always had a story to tell. Mom always had something to share with you. It was never a, a quiet, silent moment. Mom didn't tolerate silent moments. They weren't the way it was. But it was always something that mom had wanted to tell you, discuss with you, had seen during the day, had, had met at church or wherever it was. So she, she was a, a sharer in that sense. Unfortunately, uh, mom in 2017 broke her hip and uh, subsequently broke it again. And that was hugely debilitating for her movement. And so mom had to rely on others to pick her up, take her shopping, do the kind of things, take her dog. She was independent on the 14th of August and totally dependent from the 17th of August late, generally. It was that a huge transition from being able to do. So it was a lot more intimate with mom, taking her to doctors and places. And I, can, I think as I got older, I realized that there is no manual for bringing up children and there's no manual for looking after your parents. It becomes a different type of relationship. The demands are different, and I mean demands in the nicest possible way. The requirements are different. You fetch, you carry. I could go into doctors and run off mom's medication and all her injections and every, you know, because that's what you, you become part of. And those are things your mother did for you when you were a youngster. She took you to the doctor and she could tell you if you had mumps and measles and German measles and chicken poxes and all those kind of things. They, they were that that depository of all that information. And so ultimately that became my responsibility in a way, Nolene as well, and PE when she was down there. So you take on a different role between the two of you. In the very last couple of months, we moved mom into a higher care facility in, um, in the East Rand um, with a lot more sociability, a lot more people around uh, because living on her own and having a carer just wasn't, uh, wasn't suitable anymore. And so it was a second chance at life. And then sadly, uh, Friday the 18th appeared, and without, without any warning or knowledge, uh, Mom had a huge attack and uh, passed on later that afternoon. So we miss our Mom. There were times when she frustrated, for sure, but there were many more times when she made life fun, light-hearted, challenging sometimes. Um, I think she, she felt when I retired that I was now employed as her driver and I had to be a, on notice 24-7. <laughs> she had a canny ability. I must say, I'm sorry, Mom. <laughs> You're probably there with Dad and he's going, you didn't. <laughs> but Mom had the ability to reset all the phone settings on her phone without touching it, apparently. She had ability to retune her television DSTV without touching the remote. There was this gift that she had that frustrated the hell out of me. But mom, we'll miss you. And later today, we will have a uh, ginger ale and ginger liqueur, otherwise known as a ginger square. I think it's just, it's justified. We just missed her birthday, but it's a day of celebration and that would, she would have enjoyed that. So thank you all for being here and I appreciate that. Okay. Thank you very much for that. It is it is really um, a good tribute, a good celebration of Mom's life, and a capturing of everything that she me meant to you. I met her very briefly the last time I did the service here for Isabel, and and we had a good good chin wag um, over there at the back, uh, and and I think um, <laughs> I listened. <laughs> But it was it was wisdom that she shared. <laughs> so I really appreciate and thank you for allowing me into this space, this this intimate space of yours, to share in this holy moment when you come and say goodbye for a while to your mom. I was told that the hymns and uh, uh, were all chosen by 
by um, Yvonne herself. Um, Abide with me, Psalm 23, which we're going to sing later, as well as Psalm 90, which we were supposed to sing. Um, but Dudley and I agreed we're not going to sing Psalm 90, um, but instead I would read it and I would reflect on that psalm, um, since it was her chosen psalm um, uh, for us to be shared at this time of her life. And so allow me, um, firstly, to read from Psalm 90. But I'm going to read also from John's Gospel, chapter 14. Psalm 90 um, reads, Lord, you've been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the earth and the world. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn man, man, men back to dust, saying, Return to dust, O sons of men. For a thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. You sweep men away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning. Though the morning, it springs up new, but evening it is dry and withered. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. All our days pass away under your wrath. We finish our years with the moan. The length of our days is 70 years or 80 if we have the strength. Yet... Their span is but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. Who knows the power of your anger, for your wrath is as great as the fear that is due you. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Relent, O Lord, how long will it be? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love, that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad for many days as you have afflicted us for as many years as we have seen trouble. May our deeds be shown to your servants, your splendor to our children. May the favor of the Lord our God rest upon us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work for our hands. Then from John's Gospel, chapter 14, we read, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the father except through me. And then from verse 27, we read these words, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. This is the word of the Lord, and we give thanks to him for his holy and precious word. So yes, my take on Psalm 90, but it can only be understood, I believe, once we understand who the author is and a bit of the background. It is Moses who led the um, Israelites out of Egypt, who is ascribed as the author. Moses lived a very long life. He lived up to the age of 120 years. And I believe in those 120 years, he had seen a long life. He'd seen a lot about what life has to offer. In Psalm 90, we just read that our lifespan is, is 70 years, 80 if we are fortunate. Your mom has surpassed even the 80, the psalm that she chose us to read from. In verses 3 to 4, we read these words. You turn men back to dust, saying, Return to dust, O sons of men, for a thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. The reality, friends is, and family, is that even though one lives a long life, it can pass by just like that. And I believe that that is what God intended for Moses, to, what God intended Moses to, 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 to write for us to understand. 
that no matter how long we may live life, it can pass within a moment. When I spoke to Dudley, I asked if Yvonne was ill, and as you heard him say, it was very, very sudden, her passing. It came, obviously, as a surprise. You see, what Scripture often also says is that we don't know when our time on earth will come to an end. We can have a short good life, or we can have a long good life. And I want to believe that he had a long good life. But as long as life can be, even the 120 years that Moses had, had, share, had spent here on earth, it is nothing compared to eternity which God affords us. Someone once suggested that if we were to walk into a building and look for the storeroom, but open the wrong door and peer into it and see that it is actually the cleaning closet, we would quickly close that door and forget about the experience. Our life compared to eternity is like looking into that closet. It will quickly pass away. But we also learn from this psalm that God has always been a shelter for those in need of help. Moses wrote, wrote, Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. And I want to think that that is exactly what even Yvonne knew. And maybe that's one of the reasons why she chose this psalm. She knew God to be her dwelling place, especially when she found herself struggling through life. You see, people don't choose. I, when I read through this psalm, I try to understand why would it be that, that Yvonne would want to choose this particular psalm. And I don't think that people would choose a psalm like this for no reason. But let us think of Moses again for a while. Moses may have seen it all. He experienced it all. He lived it all. He, ha he had the experience, the ups and downs of life, the poor life, the good life. Moses even experienced the life of sin, the life in God, caring and directing his life. Moses lived a full life. Yvonne, as I said, had a full life, experienced it all. And maybe some of you would know some of what she had experienced. But God knew all that she had experienced. Maybe she even chose the psalm to comfort you the best way that she could knowing that you're going to battle with, with her death. Because if you will understand what the psalm is also saying, it says that God is our shelter. It is in God that we, we can come to, to find a safe place during a season like this, a season of mourning, a season of heartbreak, a season of, of not knowing which way we need to go without mom being there anymore. Because I, I'm, I'm sure you've already waited for that phone call for mom to phone you to say, my TV has changed. My cell phone is not working. <laughs> to pick up that phone to look for that message. And, and those are the things that will happen. So whenever you look back, you will think of the things that, that you had experienced with her. But know this. God knew every experience that he won to go through. The good and the bad. The joys and the sorrows. And maybe, as I said, that's why she chose the psalm for you to read. To know that God is the one that we need. You see, if you will turn to God, he will be the safe place for the season, as I said. But in this psalm, I also get the impression that Moses realizes that God is a merciful, loving God who will turn away from his wrath and give hope to those who seek him, those who seek him, especially in a time of need and in a time of pain. Because Moses writes, Relent, O Lord, how long will it be? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Yvonne knew that she could go to God for shelter, for love, protection, for guidance, for wisdom. And yes, so often we think that we get all our wisdom only from those we, we, we may know. She knew. And even the wisdom that she may have imparted with all of you, 
is the wisdom she received, I believe, from God. But I want to continue by asking that we, we just go again and listen to what it is that the gospel writer writes to us about in John. So that we can take comfort that even Jesus knew about the effects of death would have on his disciples, but as well as on you and me. And I think that that is why he tried to prepare his disciples for his imminent death, because that is the time that he had spoken to his disciples. It was just before he was about to be crucified. Jesus speaks about going away, but also about making promises about eternity. And this promise was not only just for the disciples who walked with him for three years, but it is also a promise made to you and to me. A same promise that was also made, I believe, to Yvonne while she walked among us. But there are also other promises as well in that message that he gave them. More promises for you and me. So allow me just to share three. First, there is this promise of a new home. Jesus speaks of many rooms in his father's house and going to prepare a place for them. I would want us to take comfort from that promise in that Yvonne now inhabits one of those rooms that he personally went to go and prepare for her. Comfort that Jesus said that he would go ahead, not only of his disciples, but ahead of you and me as well. I, I, I visited Margie and Isabel at um, Back of the Moon, Hole of the Moon, as, and, and I found it a very comforting place, which I'm sure your mom had experienced when she was there. People who surrounded her with love. But as homely as that place was, and as beautiful as this home is, I don't think it is anything compared to the place that Jesus says, I'm going to prepare for you. I don't think that it is as beautiful as the place that Yvonne now inhabits. Because the place she has gone to has been prepared by our Creator. And if He could create all of this beauty, can you imagine how beautiful that place must be where she finds herself now? A new home. As I said, think about it this way. Jesus said, I am going to prepare a place for you. He didn't say that he will go and speak to someone to do the job of getting the place ready. He said he is going to do it. And you know, Jesus don't give us no rubbish. He gives us the very best. In fact, he said, I came so that everyone would have life and have it in its fullest. And if that is Jesus' intent, then we can only imagine where this dear lady now is. And hopefully that gives us the comfort. She knew God as her refuge. And he is her refuge even right now. The second thing that Jesus promises you and me is that he will come to fetch us. He said to the disciples, oh, I'm going, but I'm coming back and I'm coming to fetch you. He didn't say he would send someone to fetch them. Instead, he would come personally. He said, I will come back and take you to myself so that you may be where I am. Now, I don't know about you, but I often have to turn on maps or, or ways on my phone to get to a place where I need to be. And at times, even though I'm using that, if I would put the wrong address in, I'm often, I'm often going to find myself in the wrong place. The fact that Jesus says he comes to fetch us tells us we don't have to worry about maps. We don't have to worry about Google Maps or Waze or whatever the case may be. But that he comes personally to take us so that we may be where he is. He's not even going to give directions. And so I get the impression and comfort that I won't get lost or kidnapped along the way. Because Jesus is going to be, Jesus was Yvonne's guide to be where he is. And I'm sure you'll agree with me that it's always better to go to the place when someone knows the way. And Jesus knows the way. Even the disciples said, Lord, how can you the way? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
And I'm sure that Yvonne would have heard that promise many a time and made sure that Jesus would come to take her home. And I believe that that is where she is now, safe in the arms of Jesus. The third promise is that there is for me, which is, which is for me another subliminal promise. If, as Jesus says, he will fetch us, as he did the disciples and all other believers, then Yvonne now has a new home with all others who he has already fetched. You said that she's sitting probably with your dad right now, looking down on you. And that is the reality of those of us who, who live in Christ, who live with Christ, who know Christ, who's made Christ our personal Savior. We go to where he is, to those he has even fetched before us. She is now joined. She has now joined all of them. Her hubby Ken, her mom and dad, and siblings, and even he, and all other family members and friends of us. I said it before. The family and friend circle here on earth is shrinking while the circle in the presence of Jesus grows wider, never ever to be broken again. Can you imagine her reunion with all of those who have gone before her? What joy they must just be. What love must be, be, they must be sharing with each other right now. And you and I can take comfort in the fact that this promise which Jesus makes that he's going to prepare a place for us, he's going to come and fetch us, is a promise that is made for you and me that we too can one day be where they are. So death is not the end. There is life after death, and that's eternity. Our lifespan on earth is so small in comparison to what eternity holds out for us. So in closing, let us take some life lessons from this precious lady, Yvonne, your mom, your grandmom, friend and aunt. She knew where her strength came from in her times of trial and pain and even in joy and good times. And like Moses, she knew it was in God. When she needed comfort, she turned to God. She knew God as her shelter. And because she stayed close to God, she now has a place for eternity, safe in the care of Jesus. And God is willing always willing to be a shelter and a help for you and me in our time of trouble, in our time of need, more especially in our time of sadness and brokenness. He promises to come alongside of us. You see, I praise the Lord that we can turn to Him for help. Don't try and deal with this death on your own, with your grief on your own. But remember that Jesus invites us to come to Him because He says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. God will never turn anyone away who calls on him. So come to God. Put your weak hand at a time like this in his strong hand and know that he will be your comfort in time even to come. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite us just into some uh, into a time of some more prayer. <laughs> and then we're going to be singing another hymn, which, as I said, was also chosen by by Yvonne. Come, let us pray. Praise and honor and glory and thanks be given to you, Almighty God, our Father. Because in your great love of the world, you gave your Son to be our Savior, to live our life, to bear our griefs, and to die our death upon the cross. We praise you because you have brought him back from death with great power and glory, and you've given him all authority in heaven and on earth. We thank you because Jesus has conquered sin and death for us, and has opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. We praise with the great company of the faithful whom Christ 
has brought through death, to behold your face in glory and who joins with us in worship, prayer and service. For your full, perfect and sufficient gift of life in Christ, all praise and thanks be given to you forever and ever. Amen. Eternal God, in your wisdom and grace, you've given us joy to the lives of your departed servants. We want to thank you especially for the life of Yvonne. Thank you that she loved and we could love her. Thank you that she cared and showed how we need to draw close to you. We thank you for all the memories that we'll always be able to cherish of her. We praise you for the goodness and mercy that had followed her all the days of her life and for her faithfulness in the tasks to which you had called her. We thank you that for her the tribulations of this world are over and death is past. And we pray that you bring us with her to the joy of your perfect kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, we're going to sing our next hymn, Psalm 23. Um, so let us just sing together. <laughs> Sorry. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me down to lie past his green. He leadeth me. The quiet waters by my soul and again, and me to walk doth make in the path of righteousness in all its own name say yet all I walk in this dark bird yet will I fear no ill thought with me and my rod and star Comfort still, my table was furnished in presence of my foes. I thought us with oil and wine, and why cup Goodness and mercy all my life shall surely follow me and in God's arms forevermore my dwelling place shall I'm going to invite us to stand as we commend um, this lovely lady into God's almighty hand. Come, let us pray. Merciful God, you've made us all and given your son for our redemption. We commend our sister Yvonne Lillian Willer to your perfect mercy and wisdom, for in you alone we put our trust. For as much as our sisters departed out of this life, and Almighty God in His great mercy has called her to Himself, we therefore commit her elements ashes to ashes and dust to dust, in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I heard a voice from heaven saying, From henceforth blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, even so says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. We continue in prayer. So merciful God, our Heavenly Father, 
who made your son Jesus Christ to be the resurrection and the life. Raise us, we pray. From the death of sin to a life of righteousness, that when we depart this life, we may with our sister Yvonne be found acceptable to you for the sake of your son Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Father of all, we pray for those whom we love but see no longer. Grant them your peace and let life perpetual shine upon them. And in your loving wisdom and almighty power, work in them the good purpose of your perfect will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies and giver of all comfort, we pray once again that you'll deal graciously with Dudley and Arlene, Beth, Ashley, Calvin, Candace, Lauren, Michael, and all the extended family that they may know they can cast every care on you and know the consolation of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy Father, grant us in all our duties your help, and in all our perplexities your guidance, and in all our dangers your protection, and in all our sorrows your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And just before you may be seated, just before we do say the grace, I'm going to ask Dudley to come and do the vote of thanks. Thanks, Yilton. Yilton, thank you very much for what was a really, really lovely service. And uh, it, I think it just encapsulated everything we wanted to say about our mother. And uh, you, you extracted exactly what she was about. Thank you very much. Um, other thanks so to all of you, naturally, for being here today. I really appreciate it. For all those who are able to stream with us, we appreciate your attendance, albeit uh, a distance across the world. We really, really appreciate that. In, in thanks, I'd just like to, on behalf of Nolene and uh, myself, just thank Beth for your support and help in getting us to where we are today. Often, um, siblings don't always agree quite so quickly. <laughs> so, when you have an, a referee that's a little bit less neutral, it works. <laughs> 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 to Lauren and I see Bernie's on the board. To Lauren and Bernie, you know, whenever we needed you to step up to go and help with mom, um, you did it, and, and you, you can't understand just how much we appreciate the, you, you being there. Thank you very much. Um, you know, there are others here today that are family, and we thank you for your support and love and all the wishes that you do give us. But if you'll forgive for a moment that we thank Elna and Peter especially, uh, and I mean especially as in Elna, I am singing you out, who at the same, same point as Lauren and Bernie would drop anything and go and help with mom. Um, when we moved mom in the middle of January, I specifically asked Elna to babysit her for the day, just just to reduce the trauma of trying to move, you know, somebody of her age having to move accommodations and that is a very traumatic thing. And I couldn't think of anybody else who would be more fitting to, uh, to assist with that. So Elna, thank you very much. We really, really appreciate your, your input. And Peter, the support you give Elna, for the work she does at the church and with others is, is really commendable. Thank you very much. <laughs> True. <laughs> Mike, you know, is another chap who lived in the same complex as mom and dad. He knew mom and dad exceptionally well. Um, but he was gifted with the talent of just looking at a remote control and un, un, unfixing the fixes. And, and Mike never, never wavered and you know, he'd, he'd get a mock tart and go and visit mom with his, with his daughter on a weekend and at any time, basically. So, you know, there is people amongst us as well today. So we acknowledge and thank you for that support. It really is uh, super special. And Auntie Marg, who more recently became mom's listening post. Um, and I know that sometimes neither of you listened, but both of you spoke. <laughs> <laughs> and that's fine because you were both happy there. So, you know, thank you very much for that. And then those, as I said, you are streaming. We haven't forgotten those that have done special things. Um, we know the people down in Port Elizabeth who rallied around Nolene and rallied around Mom whenever she came to Port Elizabeth to visit. We thank you out there to Jean and Ashley in the States. Um, it's an early start for your day, but we, we are grateful that you did participate and that you are here and that you understand the, the, the thanks that we are making to you for the, you know, the times when you did phone and made sure that Granny was ready with the, with a cell phone to to take the voicemail calls or the what do you call those things, face mail 
calls, yeah. But for those things, she, she would never have seen Hudson and, and Theo. And it's a sad fact that mom was supposed to arrive, uh, sorry, Ashley was supposed to arrive with the kids on the 17th of April this year. So in two to three weeks' time, she would have met her grand, great grandchildren for the first time. So it's a sad event that that didn't happen. But we are here to celebrate, and I'm, I'm thanking you for being here. But I'd like you to remember the good things, the good times, the happy moments. Even the frustrating ones landed up being funny at some point. So we thank you for that. And Hilton, thank you for your, your uh, dedication today and your assistance with us. Appreciate it. Thank you. Anything else? You happy? Okay. Thank you all. Thank you. There will be tea and cake and uh, a couple of other goodies here. Thank you. Blessing. <laughs> anyway, come let us close in prayer. And so now, in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you all.